Okay, so a super quick video. Uh, I'm running Battlefield 6 on a Ryzen 3100. So it's a 4 core CPU. Uh, running on a Vega 56. Uh, the system is slightly tuned. Uh, I will get into the tuning in late in another video. As this was just a proof of concept, it's working and it's doing 80 FPS. So this game is amazing. Uh, I've, I really, I actually love the Battlefield 2042, uh, as it was also very well optimized. But the only thing that was missing is was F FSR, which was a real shame because otherwise that would have been a, like a super lightweight game to run. Uh, another good thing ab about this game is that uh, it really works with 8 gigs of RAM really fine. And these are the settings that I ended up using. These are very important as um, it really makes, of course, of a, a huge difference whether you stay or uh, under the 8 gigabyte buffer. And what really worked for me, also for this CPU, was this one. Okay, so this uh, local um, light uh, shadows quality has to be low for this kind of system because it was really killing the CPU performance and the GPU performance. I'm now running at uh, 93 GPU FPS and 87 CPU FPS. Uh, which is ideal because you want to have the GPU slightly uh, underutilized as you want to, to get the best, best performance out of your system. It's better, like, you have more room to work with the CPU in the end. Sorry, in the, with the GPU, you have more room to, to toggle the GPU stuff, but that setting was also affecting CPU performance, and therefore, uh, for this kind of low end system, it was the the key to get the system, to get the machine to, to actually perform, and it's super playable. Uh, I, I, always, I, I mean, this was, uh, I always loved Battlefield, it was always my favorite game. Uh, I spent ages playing Battlefield 4 in the past, when I was young, uh, on a very, very low-end laptop with a Radeon uh, 8750 2GB of DDR3 video memory, which was awful that were perfectly fine and the graphics were amazing so yeah i think they're always they always had a very good optimization okay there's something going wrong here maybe my gpu is dying or so i had to to modify the the driver string to get this uh machine to even launch the game and i also had to increase the page file size i think that also helped with the stability of the, of the game uh and yeah again uh to set the graphics to uh, to keep the, the high high uh, texture because high texture are the ones that make a huge, huge difference in graphical quality and there is no medium settings for texture which is a bummer uh, but yeah I wanted to keep the high VRAM high texture quality now it says that it, we are actually exceeding the VRAM buffer for some reason the yeah it's, it's a shame. They, they have to put something like medium texture quality. They have to toggle a little bit, but that, I guess that's the beta. Of course, I'm running with FSR, which is uh, FSR uh, balanced, I think. I can't find it. Yeah, the menus can use a little bit of work. Every graphic aber aberration, big netation, and film grain are disabled. Motion blur is disabled. Um, yeah, I can't find... FSR now. The venues are, are quite shitty. But yeah, that's only a proof of concept just to show you it works. Okay, funny thing. I switched my disk to another one because the one with the battlefield was full and I'm trying to install Warzone to make a comparison. And apparently there is no more Warzone to be found on Battle.net. I find it so, so fun. No result for Warzone. So apparently Warzone is too ashamed of the competition. I mean, how can you design something so bad that it doesn't show up? Because I have no idea which one of those two is actually the one that I need to, to download to install Warzone. I guess it's this one, but still it's like, as a UI <laughs> perspective, that's a masterpiece of awfulness. And yeah, it turns out it was that one. And uh, I can actually select Warzone here. Uh, and it's 120 gigabyte now. And I'm not gonna do this. I despise this game, and this install size is just so stupid. 
and the fact that every time I, I have to update it, it's like another 60 to 70 gigabyte and it updates every other week. <laughs> uh, I hope I can get this stupid game behind for well, for good. I actually have Battlefield 2042 and the thing I hate the most about the game is the fact that it doesn't have FSR. It could be so much better optimized and it's not and it bugs me, I, it, it, it kills my, I don't know, I, I hate it. And the other thing that I don't like about the 2042 is that it's a bit too clean on the graphics. The graphics are super clean, so it's really, really plastic looking. And well, let's get to the testing of the computer. Let, let's, let me show you this, the stats of the computer now. Uh, I will do a couple of benchmarks and show you the results. And so here we are with a couple of tests run for like validating stability. We are, we are running three hours of uh, uh, VT3, White Cruncher loop. I uh, will now run um, PyPrime, which I forgot to do. So let's run PyPrime. Uh, here we can take a look at the timings. So TCL 16, TRCDWR 14, TRCD RD 20, TRP 18, TRS 36, and uh, TRD RDS 5 and TFAW 20, of course. Mm, we're running at 1867 for the MCLK, FCLK, and UCLK, so it's synchronized, of course. That's what you want to do on uh, this generation of Ryzen, which is the first one with a chiplet design, and uh, especially with uh, such a configuration where the 3100 has a uh, dual two core uh, CCDs that are linked together with with, with uh, Infinity Fabric. So this is like a dual, it's like the lowest bin CPU for the socket, I think. Uh, like having four cores with different CCDs, you have all the bottlenecks possible <laughs> that you, you could have on a bigger CPU, but only four cores. Um, so we we passed, of course, TM5 after uh, one hour and 57. Uh, we passed White Cruncher, uh, 2.5 with 220, you can see that. Uh, we passed the impact with 138. Uh, sorry, didn't run many, but I wanted to finish the video. We passed OCCT memory plus CPU for one hour. And we passed, uh, of course, Geekbench. So the score for Geekbench is uh, uh, just Ten, less than 10% ten, ten, ten better, no, 10% no, better, yeah, is that 10%? No, just 5% better on the single score, but it's 20% uh, better on the multi score. Um, let's finish Pi Prime. Okay, Pi Prime is finishing. It's gonna be something on a 370 mark. Uh, what else? So let's get to the BIOS after PyPrime is, is done. And I'll show you the settings. Okay, so 371. We've been doing some stuff in the meanwhile, so since we were doing something while we're running PyPrime, the score was a tiny bit lower probably. Well, the frequency is, to, is fixed and the voltage is, is set to 0 0.97. And this is because this, this machine doesn't have um, offset voltage so I cannot run with dynamic frequency and offset and it ends up being much more efficient this way um, and so SOC is 0 94 but I actually set this before actually going with the fixed voltage so I was having no under voltage on the CPU and the CPU was still running at around 85 degrees with that setting without with automatic voltage which means that I could probably lower this the SOC now that I'm reaching a maximum of 70 degrees uh, I can test that the same goes for these voltages since I'm now running much colder than before with the other volt I could try to lower them a little bit more but I mean they're already super low uh, I don't really know how they set that auto I'm not gonna bother now well let's do that I guess we can do that um, memory is 3733. As, as I told you, if I set the Infinity Fabric manually, 
to be uh, the same as uh, the RAM, RAM frequency. These are the timings. Uh, yeah, I guess that's all that we need. Let's do this test. So we are currently idling at around 8 watts as, as a minimum value and then 12 watts when we move the mouse around uh, which translates into like 42, 47 degrees oh it's here yeah 42 to 47 degrees while doing nothing um, let's run white cruncher set the priority to normal so that it does I can still read the values run just for 1b and let's check the voltages and stuff so we are currently rising to uh, total power for the CPU and SOC to 39 watts and temperature to 61 this, this is <laughs> incredibly efficient of course uh, I've read online that people used to run the CPUs at 4.2 GHz at around 1.2 volts I didn't try that uh, but the automatic voltage would run to around 1 to 2 volts on this machine like if I set the voltage to auto it would run around 1.2 for single core and 1.1 for all core workloads so uh, we shaved about 50% uh, of the voltage by doing manual voltage on the multi-core and more than 20% for, for the single core and we are running all core load at the same value, at the same frequency that I was previously running for a uh, single core boost. Because this, this CPU is boost for 3.9 on a single core, but I set it 3.9 on all cores. Um, so I got better, better, much better uh, performance. And yeah, we're running at a maximum of 39 watts and 62 degrees. Here, here I can see the various, various uh, SOC voltages. Again, the lowest. Uh, we have done now a 7 watt, for example. We, I saw 7 watt for the SOC plus um, core uh, wattage on island. Here you see 9 watts, 8 watts. So we are nice with the uh, idle voltages. Let's check what happens when I set everything to auto but the RAM to uh, XMP. So let's um, load UFI DIOS defaults. Let's run XMP to. Oh, I, I set this profile within a program. I will show you what I did with this, but let's just set with the stock profile. Attachment 200 is fine. This will probably work with the, the, the standard dividers. This is a very low memory frequency for Ryzen 3000, which has its sweet spots at 3666 usually. Uh, again, this, this machine was set with a little bit higher. Uh, memory volt memory frequency as it has dual CCD and being only a four core it's very easy to get higher frequencies because uh, you have a lot less uh, heat generation and so here's with the stock settings uh, yeah it synchronizes everything the SOC is 101 this CLDO is 09 V the GID is 99 so almost one volt um, the maximum is 1.16 for the uh, VID. I haven't run anything yet on the, on the CPU. And the idle, let's see the idle. So one, uh, 11 watts is the minimum uh, recorded voltage for the idle. Let's see what happens if I let it idle a little bit. Maybe it's, it will go lower. Uh, yeah, let's see. Let, let, I did rest a little bit, uh, it doesn't seem to be going any lower than 11. So we're like we have 20% more idle wattage, and let's run Y Cruncher 1B as before. It quickly rose to 55 58 watts. Um, 73 degrees. Uh, I'm telling you that this, this system with the stock voltages and the like RAM, the RAM set to 3600, which was my starting point, uh, was uh, 
thermal limited at 85 degrees after the first run, the first loop of, uh, of the impact. So the impact would uh, drop the score a little bit after the first run. Let me see. I think it scored 77 before. Yeah, 58 was the was the maximum value. 81, it's not that bad. The score is very similar. Let's see if the voltages rose up. No, the voltage stayed in 1.17, which is weird. I'm sure I've seen 1.18 before. We can run Geekbench, maybe it will give us a slightly higher single core load. But I'm not sure about that. Uh, since I'm running this Geekbench only to test single core boost, uh, what values? I will also show you the memory. And this is modified XMP that I did. I actually wrote this XMP profile using a, a program that is for the final GitHub. Memory is a Micron EDI, 8 gigabit EDI, 19, 19 nanometers. So this memory is, uh, this is quite quite a good kit of memory, quite a good uh, chip die type. It's very, very performing. And I set the voltage to 1.38 in the BIOS, but I wrote it as 139 in the XMP profile that I wrote just to be safe, so that if anyone loads the XMP profile, I'm sure that it can be actually uh, properly running on every every system, but the, the RAM is actually stable at 138. And that's also with a, like, with a, with a GPU inside running. Uh, I'll show you the problem. And here it is. Funny thing is that this program has been like made four years ago, uh, five, three years ago, sorry. But I couldn't find it before. It's something about the like indexing on Google, because I was looking for this thing two years ago for a couple of pre-builds that I bought, and I wanted to test uh, what would happen if I edit the SPD. And Typhoon Burner was not available anymore for sale. Because I mean, Typhoon Burner creator is probably. Uh, gone he was an ukrainian and i cannot purchase the full license anymore so i was looking for an alternative and this was already existing but didn't show on google search but yeah the program exists and, it, and i can you can edit spd with with this on a ryzen platform so it's very nice um yeah this, I, I forgot I, I got i got the wrong number for the soc sorry for the v core I thought it, I, I'm pretty sure I saw 1.18, but it doesn't, doesn't matter that much. We're still shaving off more than 20% of the voltage with the manual setting. And we're also running always full speed, which is our nice uh, activity bump. And last thing for B Battlefield 6, this is the open beta driver error fix thread that, I, that helped me uh, run with my Vega 64, uh, 56. And this is on Reddit. I'll link it in the description of my video. And I also linked a video that was made based on this information, just to make everything happen. Thanks for watching. Ciao.